There's a single mantra that has helped me my entire life bypass fear and make really any dream I've had come true, no matter how scary it seemed, no matter how intimidating it was, or how unprepared or inexperienced I felt. And that mantra is this, you ready for it? Start before you're ready. I'm gonna say that again. Start before you're ready. Now, if I were you, Erin, I would get that little phrase tattooed somewhere on your body and live by it morning, day, and night. Because if you don't, here is what's gonna be on your tombstone. Because here's the truth, Erin. If you wait until you feel ready to do anything meaningful, you're gonna be waiting for the rest of your life. Look, I have been doing this for a long time now. I've supported tens of thousands of entrepreneurs to start and grow their businesses across 160 industries and across 119 countries. And I've noticed some similarities. Among the people who are the most successful, the happiest, the people who are actually contributing the most, they all have one thing in common, and it's this. They all start before they're ready. You see, I think you've misidentified the enemy here because the enemy, it's not making mistakes. It's not changing your mind, and the enemy is not your fear. The only enemy that you need to defeat, my friend, is not getting started. This is what most of us just fail to realize. Action is the antidote to fear. Action creates progress and momentum. And action, consistent action, is all you ever need to make anything happen in your life. Don't give away your power. So anytime some nasty criticism or BS comes your way, you have to say this. You cannot take me down. I will not give you that power. I want you to make that your new mantra in life. You gotta realize that people can say whatever they want, but you do not have to take it in and you don't have to let it ruin your day. Your time on this earth is so precious and it's really, really important that you protect your soul. Deeper, wiser part of you wants this thing so damn bad. And the moment you imagine yourself going for it, you have worries like, you know, will people laugh at me? Will they ignore me? Maybe this isn't even really an idea. What if I do it and it sucks? Am I gonna destroy my reputation? Am I gonna lose my marriage and my family and wind up living on the streets? My friend Stephen Pressfield talks about this kind of fear in the war of art and he says, Remember our rule of thumb. The more scared we are of a work or calling, the more sure we can be that we have to do it. And he continues, the more fear we feel about a specific enterprise, the more certain we can be that that enterprise is important to us and the growth of our soul. Personally, I don't think that anyone should ever accept where they're at in life. Doesn't matter if you're just starting out or if you've already hit some really big goals because when you lose your hunger, you lose your edge and it is as simple as that. Now here's the deal. If we humans don't have something meaningful and challenging to work on, we all tend to get lost pretty darn fast and I'll tell you something else. We can go to some pretty dark places. At least I know that's true for me. So there is some nuance to this and it's really important that you get it. So you can be 10, thousand percent grateful for what you have right now. You can uh, smell the roses, so to speak. And you can be super hungry and psyched about what's coming up next. Those two things are not mutually exclusive and it's really important that you get that fact in your noggin. Be boldly not for everyone. So what does that mean? So sales prevention is this beautiful thing in business. And sales prevention is when you proactively tell people, do not buy my product, do not buy my program. You might be asking yourself why. Here's why. Because not every product is right for everyone. And that's true no matter how great you think you or your product or your service is. Because you cannot and will not please every person. So you really wanna take that fact and use it to your advantage. You wanna focus on attracting your ideal customers and really repelling the rest. So for instance, in B-School, here's what I tell people. Bottom line is this, when you are boldly not for everyone, you're gonna attract way more of the people that you are right for. And that, my friend, is the formula for creating raving fans. That's the secret to making your business a real joy to run. And when that happens, you know what starts shooting out of your laptop? No, not money integrity rainbows.
Now a mistake I notice a lot of folks making, especially in the beginning, is they want instant results. They want these blockbuster hits, like a bajillion followers on social media or millions of dollars in sales after only a few years or maybe even a few months worth of work. I gotta say, patience is one of the most underrated traits in modern business. Do not try and run before you can walk. You gotta take pride in starting small and scrappy, and we try and operate small and scrappy to this day. You've got to be consistent in what you do. You have to be relentless. And most important, this is the thing, you need to write this down. Work your tail off to make your product effing outstanding over the long term. You see, we're living in a time when we are allowing our brains to be trained to underperform. We've become addicted to checking our phones, right? To social media and all kinds of stuff. And in doing so, we are reducing our ability to stay focused and do the deep, important work that we're meant to do in this world. Now, what I'm about to suggest isn't complicated and it is not time consuming, but it will require you to take back control of your time Take back control of this beautiful brain and trust that your world will not immediately fall apart if you don't immediately respond to every ding or every buzz or every question or every request. It's just three simple steps and I promise if you use these three steps every single day, you'll not only get more important work done, but you'll start breaking the destructive, addictive behaviors that are killing your brain and your happiness. Step number one is do creative work first. Now, a big mistake that's really easy to make in today's world is to try and do all the little things and knock them out first. And then you have this fantasy that you're gonna have all this time for the big important creative work later in the afternoon. But have you ever noticed that this rarely friggin' works? Am I right? Here's why trying to do all the little things first is a really terrible idea. Because when you wake up, you have this full tank of cognitive fuel. But what many of us forget is that we only have a finite amount of this super powerful cognitive fuel each and every day. And every single time that you make a decision or you resist temptation or exert any kind of self-control, you start to drain your cognitive fuel tank. You decide, do you wanna use that limited cognitive fuel on something really important and amazing, or do you wanna blow your daily wad on a bunch of dumb crap that doesn't really matter? Moving on. Step number two, put your entire life on airplane mode. So don't try and ignore your phone or ignore the emails or ignore the Slack messages or whatever else that you have that dings and rings and pops up. That's like me telling Kuma to ignore this slice of salami. Ain't gonna happen. So rather than resist temptation, just eliminate it. And that means you have to put your entire life on airplane mode. Now, obviously, turn off all the notifications. So close all the tabs, close all the windows, turn off the apps, and especially for your phone, I suggest just turning the damn thing off. However, you also gotta shut off some people too, and that means that you might have to tell your kids and your spouse and your coworkers that for the next two hours or one hour or three hours that you don't exist. Kinda like this. <laughs> 